relationship building is an important part of a successful real estate career. That said, sometimes cutting ties with a client you don't see eye to eye with is the best path forward. And this is a popular video that a lot of you seem to like, so I'm going to do another one on it. And today I want to talk about ending things. And, uh, and sometimes it can be definitely hard out there to do, but it doesn't have to be a disaster if you make sure you follow these steps. This is Nathan Clark with Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty here in Rhode Island. In this video, I'll discuss some tips and best practices when you're ready to call it quits with a client. And don't forget, if you're a real estate agent and would like to make $100,000 or more net income per year guaranteed or I'll pay you the difference, check us out at sellmorehomesnow.info. And don't forget to like and subscribe below. My name is Nathan Clark and let's get going. First, let's talk about why you might consider ending a relationship with a client. Real estate transactions can be incredibly stressful for all parties involved and everyone is bound to have a bad day, agents and clients alike, but a single bad day isn't the same as working with a client who continually doesn't respect your boundaries or your time, or even worse, how they talk to you. If you've done your best to communicate the process and establish communications and expectations up front with them, and they're still unrealistic, if not unreasonable, over the years, we've had to end lots and lots of relationships. And on our team, we kind of have the rule here, uh, when it starts getting vulgar, where you have somebody maybe calling in and yelling at employees or agents and swearing, uh, that's the end of the relationship. Um, most of the times, those people just don't understand that there's certain things outside of the agreement that are, or contract that's not our responsibility or our fault, and they come up, but they don't seem to understand that. We understand some people have a bad day, uh, but if it's just over and over again, uh, we're just going to fire you. And uh, we found out that works best. One that comes to mind is a woman was selling a house and she had a title issue on the property, uh, unrecorded lien, or I don't know, it was an easement on the property. Uh, whatever it was, uh, she wanted to still close, but obviously she couldn't, but it was our fault and she wants us to pay the mortgage. So she thought she was going to call in and yell and berate everybody from the secretary till someone paid her mortgage. So she found herself out of having a, an agent to help her take care of her title problem. And I don't think the property ever sold with it, but we just stopped dealing with her because it was just how vile uh, she was. So, you know, I think it's how you go and you approach these situations, these relationships that you tell them up front, you know, that's just not how we do business. Uh, that's not how we talk to each other. Uh, I've tried to explain to you that this is something that is really your responsibility to be able to clean up your title and send this to somebody else, not the real estate agent's job. And they need to hire an attorney to help with it, but they just didn't understand that and wanted to just make us pay for their mortgage. So you can't uh, bring a horse to water and make a drink is what we found out. So we involved a, a third party to come in and, and talk to the person and, and see if they could help explain it to them. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, they just didn't want to listen. So it didn't go well. So those are the steps you can take. You know, you try to explain the issue to them. Uh, if they still want to play the blame game. Nope, everything's your fault. Try to bring in a third party to be a neutral uh, mitigator, if you would be. In this case, we did it with an attorney. If they still won't you know, understand that, then I think it's time to let them go. And how we let them go is we just sign a mutual release saying, hey, we're not going to hold you to the contract. You don't have to pay us. You're not, we're not responsible to bring you any more uh, services out there. And I remember in this case, the woman didn't want to sign the release. She still wanted to keep us, but we wanted out. So if they still won't sign a mutual release, it's time to get legal counsel involved on both sides. And that's what we had to do. And eventually uh, she was, uh, uh, she had got a lawyer and the lawyer told her just to let it go and try to sell it some other way. We respectively uh, were transparent the whole entire time. And when communicating with them, didn't let our emotions get in the way. And really what we decided to do at some point, because it was just so vile over the phone, is we just more brought everything over to writing where we just communicate in email. And that slowed things down. And that's something I can recommend also that you do. If it does get very heated or you know you're dealing with a heated client, Try to stop doing things over the phone and make people talk over email. Even text can be too quick sometimes. This allows them to, before they type things up, uh, there's a little bit of a path from their brain to their fingertips before they say things they shouldn't say. Uh, so be sure to provide a, um, a referral if you want also after everything's said and done. Maybe they can work with somebody else. Uh, but don't leave them high and dry if you don't have to in that situation. So hopefully the, um, you can learn from my experience with probably one of the worst clients we've had to deal with and how we had to solve it. And of course... No one enters a contract thinking it will be a bad breakup, but sometimes it happens and it happens to everybody. If it hasn't happened to you yet, it will. And use those tips. Remember, talk with respect, keep things in writing. But if it's just constantly getting that way that they're vile, then it's time to let the people go and just mutually release the people. Who wants to work with somebody that doesn't want to work with you? Um, and everybody usually understands that time. 
If you'd like more tips on how to manage your real estate business or want information on joining my real estate team here in Rhode Island, feel free to call me at 401-288-3557 or visit sellmorehomesnow.info. I'm Nathan Clark, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. And thanks for watching.